I wanted an elephant for a long time, and I wanted to tell a really awesome story with this project. See, this elephant has been in two Halo Wars and now is going to be taking place in Halo Infinite. Well, at least that's the story that I have behind it. Hey guys, welcome back to yet again another Maddie Crafts video, and this one is a massive project that I probably spent around 40 hours on, so I'm super excited to be able to show you guys. I started out with these templates here, and I'm going to be cutting them out on some white foam core that I got from the dollar store. And then I'm double layering the majority of them with more white foam core, and then tracing them out. Now that we have the basic shape of the body done, I'm going to be attaching them to the bottom piece here. All of these pieces are double layered, and I'm just going to be using hot glue for the adhesive. This is going to be the little walkway rail that they have on the inside, and I attach that to the top. And then I also start on the floor as well. Making an elephant was something I've been really wanting to do for a long time, and I'm so excited to finally get to it in today's video. Also added a few more little pieces there, and now we're moving on to the side tracks. These tracks, I also cut out these little decals off screen when I made these templates. Making templates before you actually tackle a project this large is always a good idea and really helps out a ton. I added these templates onto some pink panther foam that I get from the Home Depot, and now I'm just carving them out to shape. I actually doubled up some of these layers of pink panther foam as well, just because this thing needed to be really thick for the tracks that I had to put on, so I started with that. Once that was done, I cut off a little bit of extra piece that I needed, and I started shaping these a tad. I needed to make sure they had the right edges and groove lines like the elephant does have in Halo 3 and in Halo Wars. I kind of took a lot of inspiration off of the Halo Wars and Halo 3 style elephant, so there's going to be a little bit of mix between the two. Also, since this is going to be a Halo Infinite one, this thing is going to be really battle damaged because it's been in use since Halo Wars 1, 2, and now in Halo Infinite, which I think is a really cool concept. Working on the tracks, I'm just using thin pieces of paper here and then cutting them off. And these are going to be very simple, but just adding this paper makes it actually feel like these things have tracks, which I didn't want to spend the time making an actual like mechanical track or something that can move, even though that would be awesome, but these worked perfectly. After that was done, I went back to these other pieces and added a bunch of groove detailing. Just scored it with my X-Acto blade and mechanical pencil and just scored that as well. It actually adds so much detail, it's kind of crazy, and that's why I love working with styrofoam so much. It adds so much detail in such different, unique ways. Now applying on the tracks to these pieces. And then we're going to be attaching the tracks to the main body of the elephant. I put some little joints on the bottom of the elephant to boost it up a little bit so I didn't have to hold it up and it worked perfectly. The elephant is holding and standing on these tracks now. After that was finished, those pieces that we cut off earlier, we just reattached them on and just kind of carved them to a thinner piece and then we started working on the top of the elephant as well. This is a little bit of mix and matching that I had to do for this part. It wasn't all completely clean, but it got the job done. These are going to be the little back armor protection pieces. I don't really know how to describe them, but they look really cool when they're all done. And I used a ton of paper cladding on them and just added a little bit of scoring to get this angle. The paper cladding showed a ton of detail for very minimal time, actually, and it makes uh, everything look a lot better. Using paper and styrofoam, is pretty powerful actually when it comes to making awesome detailed vehicles and it's a trick that I'm going to be using for the future for a very long time. Then on the inside we just beefed them up with three little strips and this was just to give it a little bit more of a aesthetic look and to just protect it and make it a little stronger. Then we glued those two pieces right onto the back. And we also made some little small detail pieces that we cut out off screen and we glued those down as well. Now I had to work on a vent that's going to go on the side of the elephant. I wanted to add as much in-game detail as possible to make this really feel like it's part of the Halo universe. So I just did that with some paper cladding and just using paper made a really awesome vent. Catch that onto the side. 
Now I had to make some paper cutouts that I cut off off screen. Now I'm gonna be working on the crane. The crane here was pretty simple to make. Um, I've never made this before, I've never made an elephant before, so I had to kind of go off of pictures and all that, but making the crane here, I just cut out a piece of Pink Panther foam and then cut that right in half. And then also just attach various different Pink Panther foam pieces down to make the crane have its shape. I really love using styrofoam, how many different uses you can get out of it. You can carve it in different ways, shapes, and it actually has a very nice density and it doesn't break very often if it's pretty thick. Then I took an X-Acto blade and just carved out the various different areas here that I was going to rescore with my pencil. After that was done, I attached the front part of the crane onto the back piece and that was looking really nice. Then I had a little plastic cap that I just cut in half and attached that right there. And then I attached that to the crane. Now I had to work on the upper part where the driver will be piloting the elephant here. And this was all just white dollar store foam core as well that I cut out. Foam core is really durable when you use it properly and especially when you're gonna be adding various different things like Mod Podge like on later, like I did. And Mod Podge is a huge help with this foam and it makes it almost feel like plastic in the end. Now we're gonna be using some Mod Podge. So I didn't have a ton of it, but I did my best just to get it everywhere. So I had to use Mod Podge and then I used school glue or Elmer's glue for the rest of it. But you wanna make sure when you're working on a project this big that you add some kind of glue that's going to seal this and just protect your work. Especially after how much time I spent on this thing, I didn't want it to break anytime soon. Now we're gonna be moving on to a base coat of green paint and I used pretty much a whole bottle just for the base coat. This thing is massive and it's what I had to do, but I wanted to start out with a green base coat instead of using black. Uh, I just wanted to see how it would go and I used two layers of this and actually having the Mod Podge on earlier makes it a lot easier to just do whatever color besides like black right away. This is probably my most detailed project I've ever done on the channel, so I really wanted to make sure it was perfect, and I had to make sure I got this green into every little nook and cranny just to do that. And I went over two to three times with green, so it took quite some time, but that was worth it. Now we're gonna be hitting it with gray in a few selective areas, and I really wanted to make it as game accurate as possible, so I used some gray here and went in these little nooks and crannies, took my time, and then went back over any areas I messed up on with green. Once the gray was done in the bottom section, I also went on to these top pieces here, and then I also hit them with gray on the inside, and then we're gonna be hitting them with a silvery gray, darker gray on the outside. I wanted to have a little bit of two different kind of colors going on here. Uh, the more different kind of colors you can add to a project while still keeping it somewhat original really helps a lot in the end, and I thought it looked fantastic when it was all done. And I did that for all these little metal banding areas and like metal strip areas. Working in this project, I learned a lot and patience was definitely one of them. <laughs> Being able to paint this much and not go crazy is a little hard considering it's foam and you can't hit it with spray paint like I wanted to, but doing it all by hand paint really made this thing turn out awesome in the end and I'm super happy I took the time to do it. Now that we had all the base coat of painting done, we needed to add some kind of a mesh on the inside. This is called granny grating. So I'm applying some glue down first and then I'm tossing in some granny grating. Steel that you would have in the elephant that's kind of like in the video game itself along all of these bases on the very top of the elephant. And this actually, added so much detail it was kind of crazy i would definitely suggest going and picking up some granny grading i found it at a craft store named michael's 
After that, I went on and tried to make a little control panel out of clay. Now this didn't need to be anything fancy at all. I just wanted something kind of in the driver's area and I really like how it turned out. Super simple, super fast, but honestly, that's all you really need for this project. Then I just attached the hook onto the crane and then reapplied the crane back into its spot. I took the Warthog Rally set and ripped off the chain gun and then just applied it right onto the corner. Now I wanted to add a ton of battle damage to this piece, a ton of detail, scratching, scarring, anything like that. This has been in two Halo Wars and is now fighting in Halo Infinite. And the story behind this is, this was the elephant that basically brought the bomb up for when you have to detonate it in the first Halo Wars game and you bring it kind of up that lift. I thought that would be kind of cool. So later on, you'll see a little memorial to forge in it, but also it's been through hell and back. This thing has seen the flood, the covenant, the banished, and so many other crazy things, sentinels. This has been through all kinds of war. So it looks like it is damaged up. And since Halo Infinite is humanity is pretty much falling apart and they are losing the war, I figured it would be perfect if they're using some old tech like this to where it's just so battle damaged, it's barely running, but hey, they have to make do with what they have. So I went on and just added a ton of detail, pretty much all with my brush and my fingers. It actually didn't take that long. And then I added some silver dry brushing along the elephant as well just to give it even more battle damage and damage scarring everywhere. I wanted this thing to look damaged AF, and it definitely does. I also did a little bit of silver on that black granny grating as well, and I wanted blood all along the tires. We did this actually before in one of my live streams, and it really gave me a ton of inspiration. Actually doing that live stream with the Grizzly Tank gave me a ton of inspiration. So everybody that was a part of that live stream, I really appreciate it because you guys gave me so much inspiration for this build. It's not even funny. Now we're gonna be doing a bunch of rust and this is just some gray paint. I'm gonna be going along and adding it into some areas. This thing is super old, this elephant. So rust is a forming everywhere and I don't care if it's super crazy space metal, there's rust in my world, so. We're adding rust all along this elephant, and I think it turned out awesome with the little rust effects. Now we're gonna be adding some blood, some human blood. So people have died on this elephant. The gunners have died a few times. Other areas of the elephant where Marines were standing or flame troopers were standing, they have also died. So I wanted to keep it as traditional as possible. And I wanted to make it somewhat cool and make it feel like some Marines have also fallen while they're using this elephant because they absolutely have. And I thought that was a really cool touch. This is a little memorial that the Marines made for Forge. They would have all died pretty much if Forge didn't detonate that bomb in the first Halo Wars. So they painted on a few of these clubs here and then they just wrote down a little bit of Forge on the side. I thought it was a nice little touch. Not the best drawing ever, but it's for him. On the side here, I wanted to go back and shout out Halo 3 a little bit. And this is that weird little fish whale thing. I don't really know what this thing is, but I absolutely love the art style of it when it came out in the game. It was always kind of like a little bit of a meme in Halo 3, so I figured I would attach it to the side of my elephant, and ooh, it actually turned out pretty good, and I was pretty happy with it because I kind of suck at painting, but I think I'm getting better thanks to these kind of builds and projects, so. Had to start out with some blue, went over with some white in some of these areas, and gave him his little fins and everything, and I was very pleased with this little guy. After that was done, I also added some scratch marks. Maybe they took down some banshees, some wraiths, some locusts, 
I don't know, but the Gunners will put some scratch marks up there every once in a while for whatever they take down. My last little touch was a UNSC logo on the side of the elephant here. This thing has lasted a long time and uh, it's been there since it's been commissioned. So this is an awesome little logo. I actually painted it pretty decently, which I was proud of. I got these really nice little paint brushes and those helped out a ton in this. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video all the way to this point. Honestly means a lot, I appreciate it. And also don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, and share with a friend so I can help my channel grow and I can make more awesome and epic projects just like this. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Like always, let me know in the comments down below what I should be next. I'm also gonna be a little bit busy here for the next upcoming week, so probably not gonna be posting any videos anytime soon, but if I do, there'll probably be some shorts coming out. Also, if you wanna see more of this build, there's a link to my Instagram down below in the description. Definitely go check that out and give me a follow. And that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.